Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. Today we are going a little bit retro with a Nixie clock. I know there are a lot of tutorials on them and you've probably already seen some, but what my clock does is it actually ticks. I achieved it with only a shader and uh, now without any further ado, let me show you how I did it. Let's start Blender with a new general file. Add a uh, reference image. Uh, of our Nixie font. You can find a lot of them. Just enter Nixie Cube font to your preferred search engine and there should be a plenty of results. I downloaded mine to a folder so I will just open it. And uh, the way we added it, uh, it is facing the current camera. So let's uh, zero out uh, the rotation in the object properties. Uh, let's uh, Let's actually keep the Z axis rotation at 90 degrees. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, scale the default cube to match the height of the real Digitron tube letters, which is around uh, 10 centimeters. And Let's set uh, our view from top from the Z axis. No, not, not, not like that. Uh, this. And let's, uh, let's actually rotate the reference image 180. No, zero. I was, I was right actually at the beginning. And now let's scale, uh, let's scale it down to match our pre-scaled cube. Like that. Okay. Now we can get rid of the cube. So let's delete it. And also uh, back in the object properties, so let's uncheck the selectable in the visibility to freeze the reference image so it uh, doesn't get in the way. Add a Bezier curve, go to edit mode. Now select, uh, select all the points. Right click and uh, set the uh, spline type to poly. Select the vertices and now uh, move them uh, somewhere closer to our reference image and we'll make the first number one, which is obviously the simplest one. It's just a straight line. So let's align the vertices. To make sure the line is straight, let's uh, copy the X position of the top vertex and just paste it to the X position of the bottom vertex. And let's center it a bit. Okay, number one is finished. That was quick. Okay. Back to the object mode. Uh, let's hit Ctrl D, uh, hit escape. Uh, this will duplicate our object, but we need to move it on the, on the X axis. So let's move it. And actually let's uh, set the origin to geometry and uh, let's do the same for the number one. So object set origin, origin to geometry. Okay. Now back to number four. Let's go to the edit mode. Select the top vertex, hit control E to extrude it. Now W to move it. And actually we have to fix the Z position. Uh, that one is zero. Let's select the vertex that we extruded and, uh, and zero it out. Let's check also the, the other ones, how, how we stand. Z is zero. That one uh, is zero as well. So back to the number four. Okay, edit mode. And let's position it. Okay, like this, make it a straight line again. So let's copy and paste the X position. Okay. Now see like this one, move it downwards a bit. 
Now hit Ctrl E and let's switch to XYZ mode and now we will move it just on the uh, XY plane. Now back to the origin mode. Let's set the origin to geometry again. And now let's uh, let's rename it actually to to number four and number one. Good. Okay. Uh, Control D again. Escape Control D and W and move it to move it to seven. So. Let's move the position, delete the vertex. Now, again, we will make this line straight. So copy the Y position and paste it to the other vertex. Okay, let's move that one. And now what we will do is we will create sort of a sort of a radius or a fillet to the to the corner. So let's select the two vertices, segment and subdivide. This will add a vertex and let's uh, let's move it to the position. And let's also subdivide the other segment and move it move it upwards. Okay, let's let's tune up the position to resemble uh, to resemble a radius. Okay, that that seems better. Once once again. Okay, rename it to number seven. Great. Back to object mode. And let's 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 actually tune it up a bit. That seems that doesn't seem right. No, no, maybe it's better. This 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 looks this looks good. Okay, back to object mode. And to our uh, number one. So let's uh, duplicate it. Okay, move it to, to zero. Rename it. And position the position the vertices. And now let's actually start uh, start extruding it. Control E and start extruding it. Okay, and uh, just keep the extrusion active and just click and drag to to move the newly newly created segment. And we will. Uh, we will actually only make a quarter of this number and then mirror the the rest. So let's continue moving it to the position. Okay. Okay, I I think we actually have uh, have two curves here. Let's uh, let's actually inspect that. So let's zoom in. Move the that one. No, if I click the vertex, yes, that that was the one that's that separates. So let's uh, let's delete it. Delete the segment. Select it entirely. Okay, let's remove that one and delete the segments. Good. Now, 
select all the vertices, hit Ctrl D, escape and move it. Now object mirror on the X and uh, place the place the curve to position. Now again, let's select the curves, Ctrl D, move it, object mirror on the Y and move it to position. Okay, let's select the vertices segment, uh, and make segment from them. The same on the other side, make segment. Okay, and on the top and the bottom as well. Okay, we can uh, turn on or off the cyclic. This is the same as, uh, as the make segment for the last one. Now select the top segment and subdivide it to create additional point and move it upwards. And also subdivide the side segments and let's uh, position them a little bit. Let's, let, let's get, just get rid of them. And make the curve cyclical again. I think I forgot to do that. Make toggle cyclic, yes. Okay, so back to object mode and uh, I think now I will fast forward the video because the process is the same for all the other numbers. Uh, you can reuse parts of the, of the curves and uh, then just connect them, uh, connect them together. So let's finish with number two quickly, make some radiuses there. Number three, let's reuse number two. Reposition, uh, reposition the, the circle or the arc a bit. Delete some of the segments and connect the two together. Okay, let's save it. Number three is similar to number five. So let's, uh, let's actually copy it and reposition the vertices of the of the arc and then weld them together with make segment okay five is complete now let's reuse it for number six okay so with six we have also nine Let's copy number three, delete, uh, delete three quarters of it, make only a quarter of the bottom. Now mirror it again on both axes. Let's duplicate the, the entire bottom, mirror it and reposition, connect together. And now we have our numbers pretty much complete. Let's also fix number four. I forgot to add there the, the fillets. So now, okay, final tune-ups. And this is all. Let's uh, hide our reference image uh, from the view and from the render as well. Select our number nine. And uh, we will add a geometry node modifier. Uh, let's add a new one and rename it uh, to solidify numbers. Okay. Go to uh, geometry nodes tab. Okay, zoom in on the on the curve. And uh, let's add a curve to mesh node. Okay. Plug the geometry into the curve socket and mesh output to the geometry socket of the group output. Uh, let's add a profile, not, not a profile, but a quadrilateral as a profile curve. So let's connect the circuit and fill the caps. Now let's expose the width and height parameters. 
and let's change it to 0 0.3, 0 0.1 millimeters width and 0 0.3 millimeters height. Okay. Uh, let's also actually add a set shade smooth node. And let's uncheck the shade smooth. Okay, I want it to be flat. So let's uh, copy the three nodes. Uh, now we have our, uh, uh, our physical number and now we will add a glow. Let's uh, add a joint geometry node separate the, the lines, connect the output of the joint geometry. We will add also a set a material node and, uh, and duplicate it. So uh, the glow and uh, the physical number will uh, have uh, each assigned its own, uh, own material. Now uh, to smooth, uh, smooth the input curve a little bit, uh, let's add a set spline uh, node, set it to Bezier. Now add also a set uh, handle type. Okay, let's connect the curve sockets together and we'll keep it set at auto. Now uh, let's uh, plug the output of the curve to the input of the curve to mesh. And uh, also let's uh, let's make uh, parametric the quadrilateral. Let's add a math node, and uh, we will be adding uh, we'll be adding two millimeters uh, to the width and height. So let's connect the let's duplicate actually the the node. Okay, and connect it to width and height and let's plug in the width to, to both of these nodes. So this will add two millimeters and make the quadrilateral uh, square. Now uh, let's uh, tick the let's check the shade smooth for the for the glow. And uh, also I will add a transform node uh, which we will uh, use later on. We will uh, we will need a we will need to offset the the numbers and uh, let's at combine x y z. We'll plug in the vector to translation and let's expose the z uh, the z parameter. Okay, and let's uh, let's actually rename it to to z uh, offset. Okay. Now let's uh, let's organize it uh, a little bit. So let's uh, frame these. Uh, frame selected. Okay, and uh, let's name this glow. Let's select the two, the other one. Uh, these. Okay, frame them. And let's name this uh, metallic metallic numbers. Okay. Now uh, let's remove the modifier and let's actually make a backup of the of the numbers. Let's create a new collection. Call it numbers original. And uh, select all the numbers. Control C and uh, paste them to numbers original okay now we have a backup of the of the numbers select our number nine reassign the geometry nodes modifier again the solidify numbers and we have to fix the default values so let's go to group and change the width to uh to one millimeter uh, the minimum and maximum can stay like they are mm. Let's actually update it also in the modifier tab. And the height will be 0 0.3 millimeters. Okay. And uh, 
let's uh, let's see the output of the metallic number itself okay let's replug the glow back to the joint geometry and let's rename the height to thickness okay And let's actually also remove uh, one of the math nodes and we'll use only the one and duplicate the output to the height as well. Okay, and replug it to... Uh, we will expose the, expose the value and name it as glow offset. And set the default to two millimeters, and now we can uh, we can uh, start assigning the geometry nodes to the other numbers. Okay, let's select number eight and add a modifier geometry nodes solidify numbers. Okay, we forgot to set our default for the for the thickness. I believe let's change it to zero point three millimeters. Okay, let's update it also in the modifier tab and now, now it should work correctly for the other numbers as well. So let's select number 7, assign the geometry nodes modifier, solidify numbers, yes now it's working correctly, so let's continue with the other numbers. Okay. Number three, num number three, uh, it's, uh, let's, uh, why it doesn't select? You know, it's, uh, let's hide the original numbers and now it's, uh, now it's, uh, now it's correct. Let's assign the solidify numbers. Okay, good. Number two. Okay. One and the and the last one. Okay, there. Let's let's see. Let reselect the zero, and let's uh, let's reassign it. Okay, perfect. So now we have all the numbers solidified. Back to the layout tab. Now let's collapse the numbers original, select number 9, and uh, assign a pass index to each uh, of, the, of the digits. Number 9 will be 9, 8 is 8, 7 is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and zero okay now let's uh, position the numbers to the same spot let's uh, hit w and move each of the numbers on the x-axis okay, number five let's move it six Seven and now let's move the two a little bit closer and now let's position them. Okay. And finally the number nine. Now let's check on uh, uh, on a wiki how the numbers are arranged in the tube. Uh, first one is number five, then it's number six, and we will use a Z offset of the geometry nodes to position them. So the first one will be at 0 0.018, the six will be at 0 0.016, and now let's check further. It's number four and number seven. So let's see the number 4, that's 0 0.014, number 7, uh, 0 0.012, 
Okay, then we have number three and number eight. So let's select number three. That's uh, 0 0.01, number eight. 0 0.8, uh, where is it? No, 0 0.08 actually, not 0 0.8, okay. Number three should be, that's, uh, that's that looks that looks okay. We have it already positioned. And what are further numbers? It's uh, number two and number nine. Okay, that should be 0 0.6, 0 0.006. Number nine is 0 0.04. Okay, zero zero four. I'm always missing that one. Uh, that one zero. Okay, number one is uh, point zero zero two, and zero stays uh, stays where it is. Now let's select all of them. Uh, hit E to rotate it on the X, and let's set it to ninety degrees. Great. Okay, now go to shading tab. Uh, let's frame uh, the numbers. So select any number and hit uh, F. And let's uh, let's check the metallic numbers. Let's uh, crank the metallic all the way to one, roughness to zero point three. And that is our metallic numbers material. Let's uh, change the color uh, to, to the bit to the blue. And now to glow. Let's actually delete the principled BSDF shader, add a emission shader, and a transparent shader. Now add a uh, mix shader, and let's plug the shader to the surface output, transparent to the top slot, and the emission to the bottom socket. Let's crank up the emission to 5 and uh, color to orange uh, orange red okay let's uh, a little bit to the orange okay now uh, enable bloom in render tab for ev also screen space reflections and refraction as well uh, to met in the material tab uh, let's uh, change the blend mode to alpha clip this will get rid uh, of the of the emissions when they are uh, when they are not uh, visible so now when we change the factor, we can change the emission to be either uh, either hidden or visible. Now let's add a math node, change it to compare. And uh, what we will do, let's add a value also. Uh, and a object uh, info. Now we will be comparing an object index with the value. Let's plug the result to the factor. And uh, every time the object index uh, matches the value, the appropriate number will glow. So one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And uh, later on, we'll make that dynamic. Now back to our layout tab, uh, let's organize things a bit. Move all the numbers to the center of the scene. And uh, in our collections... Okay, in our collections, uh, let's uh, move the numbers to the scene root. Also the camera to the scene root, the light to the scene root, and... Uh, the reference as well. Okay, and now let's rename the collection to seconds des. As a decimal, this will be our one second counter that goes from zero to nine. Now add a mesh cylinder as our glass tube. Scale it, uh, let's set the vertices to 16 and the uh, radius to uh, to five centimeters. 
so two centimeters, so three, five, five centimeters, okay. The depth uh, will be uh, 10 centimeters, okay. Now toggle on the x-ray or see-through mode to see inside the tube and uh, let's actually adjust the position of the digits a bit, see it from the y-axis, let's position it to the center, okay. Let's select the, the cylinder itself, the tube, our tube, and let's go to edit mode, uh, select the top face and move it upwards. Now uh, let's select the bottom face, hit I for inset and move it inwards. Let's click again and drag inside. And now we will merge or collapse the vertices at center. This will create uh, triangles instead of the n-gon. Now back to the top. Now let's select the top face and hit Ctrl E for extrude. Let's extrude it upwards. Now press uh, R to scale it on the XY plane. And press W and move it downwards on the Z axis. Uh, now let's extrude it again. Uh, scale it down on the XY axis and move it down to create this dome-like shape. Okay, and let's uh, let's actually s no no not to move. I don't want to move it. I want to actually scale it down a bit on the X Y plane again. And now extrude it again to let's say create a protruding tip of the of the vacuum tube. Let's scale it down and uh, and extrude it uh, extrude it again. Adjust the scale and position and uh, now let's merge the vertices at center again. Okay, now uh, let's select the edge ring and let's slide the edge down a bit. Okay, let's move the tip. Now let's add a uh, subdivision surface modifier. and uh, toggle off the x-ray to see the, the mesh clearly. Now let's add a edge loop by pressing Alt-C and dragging it upwards, another one uh, down to the bottom. Let's see the, uh, let's see the bottom of the tube and uh, let's uh, actually select the edge ring by double clicking it and scaling it down to create a larger, uh, larger radius of the fillet on the bottom. Now let's also uh, let's also slide the the top uh, edge loop to create the larger radius also on the on the top part of the tube. Now let's select the edge ring and tune it up tune it up the, a bit by scaling it. Also this one. And let's let's play around a bit with the with the tip. And uh, turn off the turn off the subdivision modifier to see clearly the the edge rings if you need to. And. Uh, and let's actually see a reference image, uh, how high the tip is. So let's uh, let's select the vertices, move them upwards. Okay, let's set shades move. That looks that looks decent. Okay, go back to edit mode. Uh, let's uh, let's move I. I messed up because I didn't have uh, the X-ray mo X-ray mode on, and I didn't have selected the rear part of the mesh. So actually, let's uh, undo that. Uh, turn on the X-ray. Uh, let's select the vertices again, and uh, let's let's fix that. Okay, 
and let's also make the tube a little bit higher. Good. Back to the object mode, uh, set shades move, and uh, as we undo it, uh, let's uh, let's uh, add again the subdivision surface modifier. Now let's reposition the numbers uh, on the Y axis. Okay, and now let's make the tube a little bit thinner. Okay. Now, now let's actually hide the tube itself and let's add another cylinder mesh. It will be 4 centimeters, so 0 .0, 0 0.04 meters, 4 centimeters, yes. And the, the height of it, let's set it to 1 million, two, 2 millimeters. Okay, let's move it downwards. And now, uh, now let's name our objects. This will be a cube, uh, cube base, and the, the other cylinder will be a cube. Okay, yet another cylinder mesh. The radius will be one millimeter. The height, uh, let's set it to five centimeters. Five, uh, ten centimeters. Let's put it, oh, ten centimeters, 0 0.1 meter, okay. Uh, now position it to the, to the right side of the digits. Let's see how we look in the front. Let's move it, move it upwards a bit. Okay. Now to edit mode, uh, select the faces and uh, let's uh, let's add uh, let's add some uh, some uh, loop cuts. Okay. Uh, let's add some some uh, loop cuts by pressing Alt uh, Alt C and sliding it upwards and uh, downwards as well. Now uh, let's select the top face. Select the top face. Uh, let's undo that. I didn't want to add another loop cut. Uh, okay, let's select the top face by clicking the black dot and let's hit I for inset and inset it a little bit. Uh, here we don't need to collapse the collapse the angon as uh, this is very small and this this will look this will look okay. So let's turn it to shade smooth. And now uh, let's hit uh, Control D to duplicate uh, to duplicate our uh, our object. Uh, let's actually go back to edit to object mode. And now let's hit uh, Control. Uh, now let's let's hit Control D to duplicate it. I thought to mirror it, but uh, this will be this will be faster in this case. Uh, let's check the X position of the first pole. Uh, let's Control C and paste it to the other pole just with a minus sign. This is basically a mirror, but uh, it may be faster than to set up a mirror axis. So now let's uh, another object. Uh, this time it will be a torus or a donut. The minor minor radius uh, let's set to zero point three millimeters. And if you still have that uh, x coordinate uh, in the uh, in your clipboard, you can paste it as a major radius, and it will uh, it will be a perfect fit between the poles. Okay, let's uh, turn down the the segments. Uh, the minor will be six. The major sixteen. Read. 32, 
maybe no 24 let's let's go with 24 that's that's enough okay back to object mode let's uh, let's move the object downwards let's go back to edit mode and delete half of the half of the donut half of the torus let's delete the vertices okay now uh, let's actually return to the object mode uh, add a array modifier and uh, let's select a constant offset uh, the distance will be uh, five millimeters but not obviously on the y-axis but on the on the z-axis okay not uh, five cent we have again five centimeters five millimeters okay and let's check the reference image how they are positioned the grid uh, let's make it tight a bit tighter to four millimeters okay and let's crank uh, crank up the count uh, all the way to the top so to 24. let's select the base the the poles and let's set uh, set shade smooth uh, both to the cube base and uh, to the torus to the to the grid and now let's add some loop cuts so let's uh, hit alt c and uh, add a loop cut to the top of the uh, and to the bottom of the code of the cylinder and now let's uh, inset the top and bottom faces so the bottom one let's uh, i and inset it Okay, uh, deselect, select the top face and insert it. Okay. And I think now, now it might be a good time to assign some, uh, some materials actually to the, to the objects that we have modeled. So let's go to the shading tab, uh, select, uh, select one of the objects, uh, hit uh, F key to frame, well, actually in the object mode, uh, select object, hit F to frame it to the, to the view. And uh, now select the torus and uh, assign a metallic numbers material to it. The, the same for our grid, um, okay, select the other cylinder and assign a metallic numbers material, okay, now let's actually join the objects together, so select them all, uh, select object and join, but uh, let's undo that, uh, we actually have that uh, array modifier on the grid, so let's apply it. And now we can uh, now we can uh, join them again without uh, having this effect of the array also applied to the cylinders. Now for the, the base, we will create a black plastic material, and it will be just a simple one. Let's turn down the value not all the way, but uh, almost to the to black. And uh, let's uh, change also the roughness a bit to be a bit a uh, bit more rough okay now uh, just a uh, let's quickly check the reference image okay there is this sort of a back plate so let's uh let's model it uh we'll, let's go back to layout tab at a cylinder mesh again so uh, I don't have the radius uh, in my clipboard anymore, so let's uh, put something like zero three to roughly match the the distance between the between the poles. Okay, uh, let's move it upwards a little bit. And now select the top and uh, bottom top face let's move it down let's also select the bottom one and the front faces okay uh, let's uh, let's actually delete them 
to delete the faces. Okay. Uh, now we will already add some loop cuts. So press Alt C and slide one loop cut to the top, uh, another one to the bottom, and also one on the one side and the other one as well. Now to add some thickness, let's add a solidify modifier. Okay, and change the thickness to two millimeters. One millimeter maybe. Okay, that looks that looks good. Um, now, uh, now back to object mode. Let's set shade smooth. And go back to our shading tab. Now assign it the black plastic material. Okay, that looks that looks that looks good. Okay, now unhide our uh, our glass tube. Uh, let's assign a new material. Let's rename it glass. And the transmission will go fully with one. Now in the render tab, uh, let's make sure that uh, green spaces refractions is enabled and also we have to enable it on a per material basis. So in the settings, let's enable screen space refraction. And uh, now as it is, it's uh, let's turn down the roughness first of all. Okay, and now it's a actually a solid uh, solid glass. So uh, for EV, we need to change the refraction depth to three, something like three millimeters to simulate a thickness of a, of a glass wall. That looks good. And uh, but uh, cycles actually for cycles we need to we need to modify the actual uh, actual geometry because uh, the settings in the material tab is for uh, EV only. So let's go to a modifier tab and uh, let's add a solidify modifier. Okay. And uh, I don't see actually uh, any any difference in the in the in the material. Why? Why is that? Um, that I, if we change the thickness of the wall, okay, it's one millimeter. And that's because we are not in the render view. Yes, obviously. So now it looks correct with the with the solidify modifier. And if we turn it off, you can see the effect uh, of the solid glass. So let's turn it back on. And uh, that's our uh, cycles. And let's also turn down the samples for the viewport and for the renderer. We'll need that later on. And uh, in the material tab, um, let's actually uh, also enable blend mode alpha blend. Okay, and the refraction depth set to uh, two millimeters for uh, for EV. So let's turn back to uh, let's uh, switch back to EV and. This uh, this looks this looks good, decent. Obviously, cycles is uh, physically accurate and uh, it looks much much better. But for the moment, let's work uh, let's work with EV. Now let's get back to our layout tab. Uh, see from the front. Um, let's uh, let's rename. Uh, let's. Uh, Let's actually make. Uh, let's rename this as a anode. Okay. This one will be our backplate. Okay. And now let's assign a array modifier to our anode, and uh, let's actually already make uh, groups of the of the tubes. 
So we'll use a constant offset uh, on the x uh, 0 0.1 uh, meter minus 0 0.1 meter. Okay. And we will make another group uh, of, uh, of two by adding another array. Uh, change the count to three and uh, we will again use the constant offset. Distance will be minus 0 0.1, no, 225. So this will create this, uh, this uh, three groups of, uh, of, uh, of two. Okay. Now uh, let's do the same for the back plate. Let's add a subdivision uh, modifier first because we didn't apply it. And uh, now let's add the array again, constant offset. Actually, we could use the we could use the array modifier of the of the anode. So let's remove the array modifier. Let's also remove the uh, subdivision and apply the apply the solidify modifier. So on our uh, cube base, we will join the we will join the object. Okay, join and. Uh, now uh, let's uh, let's check the if the materials state uh, assigned correctly and they have. So back in the layout tab, uh, let's actually assign the array modifier to the tube in the same way as we did for the anode. So that's uh, one uh, array modifier for the pair with a constant offset of uh, minus uh, 0 0.1 meter on the x. And obviously there is something wrong with the, uh, with the distance. And uh, that is actually because we haven't applied, applied a scale to the object. So let's fix it. Let's apply a scale and uh, now it's positioned properly. So let's uh, add uh, another array modifier for the, for the three groups of two. With, uh, with the distance uh, minus 0 0.225, uh, but not as a relative offset, but as a constant offset. So let's uh, enter again the value minus 0 0.225, and we have our uh, cubes positioned properly now. Uh, now let's, uh, let's organize things again, move the anode and the cube to the scene root. And now collapse the second decimal collection. And let's actually duplicate the collection. Uh, let's name it seconds hexa or hex, seconds hex. Uh, and uh, let's change the indexes. Uh, this one will start at 10. Okay, and we'll go all the way from 11 to 19. And let's select all the numbers and position them manually with uh, minus 0 0.1 meter. Okay. Let's uh, duplicate the collection again. Uh, rename it to minutes des as minutes decimal. Okay. And let's change the indexes again. We will start with uh, 20 here. Let's select all and move them. Okay, minus 0 0.125. Okay. Uh, let's duplicate the collection. Rename it as a minute hex. Okay. Uh, start with 30. Okay. Collapse uh, all the all the collections. Let's duplicate uh, the minix hex. Uh, let's rename it uh, as a minute uh, an hour. This will be this will be already an hour, and we'll name it hour zero one. And let's actually select all the numbers from the minute hex collection and move them uh, minus zero point one meter uh, uh, on the x axis. 
Now let's also uh, also move the hour collection with minus 0 0.225 on the X. And let's assign the indexes. We'll, uh, we will start with, uh, with, with 40 here. So let's enter 40. And let's uh, duplicate it for the final time. Duplicate collection. This will be hour zero two. Okay, and uh, we will start with fifty here. Fifty. Now uh, select all of them and uh, move them to their spot, which is minus zero point one on the x. Okay. So let's collapse this and add another cylinder. One millimeter diameter and the height. Uh, let's set it to something like 0 0.15 millimeters. Okay, 15 millimeters. Now let's uh, get the view from the side from the top and let's uh, let's uh, position it in the edit mode because I want the origin to stay where it is. Now we are Australian. Let's move it down on the Z axis. Okay, a bit more down, take a look from the front and adjust the position. I'll select uh, the faces again and uh, now we will uh, spin it, which is basically a radial array. Let's spin it. Uh, it will be 12 steps and 360 degrees. Now we have our pins. So back to object mode. Where are you? Uh, in the hours collection. So let's move you out of here. And let's name you pins. Okay. Now let's assign it a material, which will be again the metallic numbers. I don't want to use uh, too many materials. So let's what, uh, what we already have. Now back to layout tab. And uh, let's actually use the, the array from anode material, anode uh, object. So let's join these two together and uh, this will keep the array modifier. So we have now a single anode object that has the, the previously modeled parts and the pins. Now let's uh, add another cylinder, which will be our socket. Uh, let's set the size to 16, or vertices to 16, radius, uh, let's see, 2 centimeters, uh, no, we need something larger, uh, let's we'll set 45, 5, uh, I'm actually already thinking ahead because we will need a, we will make a cover and uh, we will need uh, cutouts in it and I am thinking about the diameter so that we can fit both the socket and the cutout between the, between the tubes. So 0 0.46 it is, and the depth, uh, let's set it to 20 millimeters. Now uh, let's uh, move it downwards. So it touches the, so it touches the tube from the bottom. Let's position it a bit. And now in the edit mode, and we will start adding some uh, loop cuts. Let's hide the unnecessary items. So we have a clear view and now let's select the bottom face, inset it, lay it again and now merge the vertices at center. Okay, now the top face, inset it. Now uh, we will extrude it downwards Inset it just a little bit again inside to create an uh, edge and inset once again and merge it center. 
Okay, now we can add loop cuts to the sides. To the inside. And to the top. Now let's add the subdivision surface modifier and go to object mode and set shades move. That looks that looks good. Now let's assign it a black plastic material. And back in the layout tab, let's uh, let's add there the array modifier with the usual uh, constant offset uh, with minus 0 0.1 meter and another array with uh, three items and uh, constant offset of uh, minus 0 0.225 meters. Okay, and the count to three. Now let's unhide the items. Add another object, a cube, which will be our baseboard. Now let's uh, scale it down to a to a thin thin board. So let's continue scaling. Position it to the center of the tubes and let's take a look from the front. Scale it down again. And actually uh, set the thickness to 3 millimeters. Now again experiment a bit with the length and the width. So 0 0.675. And the width I will again... Uh, Take a bit of experimenting. Let's rotate the view a bit. And not even even a bit thinner, I think. 220. Two two one. I feel settle with 0 0.2 meters. Okay. 20 centimeters. Now uh, let's position it down so it touches the bottom of the socket. Okay, we will make a geometry node setup that will actually place a uh, sort of a soldered pins to make it look like a, like a circuit board, and uh, for uh, for that we will need to make the make the mesh uh, a bit denser but let's aside need the black plastic material and let's turn down the roughness to 0 0.4.4 okay so we will need a little bit uh, more dense mesh and uh, we will achieve that in uh, the geometry nodes but uh, i want to be i want it to be uh, more even so let's Add some loop cuts, so the segments uh, are uh, are uh, uh, are of the same size. Back to object mode, and now let's add the geometry nodes modifier, make a new one, and let's name it circuit board. Okay, now to the geometry nodes tab. Let's center the view. And uh, now let's add a, a mesh cylinder primitive. Set the vertices to lows like 8. Radius will be 1 millimeter. Depth let's set to 2 millimeters. Let's add a instances on points. The cylinders will be our instance. The, uh, the board that we created will be the source of the points. 
Uh, we can't see anything uh, because uh, let's also apply a scale because that would uh, that would create a weird weird uh, stuff with placement of the of the instances and let's actually add uh, a, a join geometry node and let's uh, let's feed the output of the instances instances on points and the and the board to the group output okay now they are placed on uh, on uh, each point of the geometry which is uh, obviously two scars so let's uh, let's make it uh, more dense so let's uh, first let's uh, let's modify the cylinder a bit let's add a scale elements uh, select only the top and uh, scale it down to 0 0.5 now let's add a set shade smooth node and uh, also a subdivide mesh now we'll make it more dense so and set it to four or even five Okay, now we have a uh, dense enough mesh and it starts to look like a like a circuit board with the soldered soldered pins. Now uh, we need to actually actually select on which faces we want and for that we will uh, we will use a compare set to vector and we will plug in a normal which uh, which uh, finds out the normals of our mesh. And we will want it on the Z axis. So let's set the Z on the to one, and let's plug in the selection uh, to the instances on points. Uh, there, it's actually on the bottom. So we need to we need to make it opposite and set to minus one. Now we have it on the on the correct side, and we just need to make it a bit more random. So uh, now now I will. Uh, I will add a random node and uh, we will combine it with the with the with the vector uh, vector comparison with a simple boolean math node set to logical end so both uh, the the soldered pins will be placed on the surface that is uh, minus one uh, on the z-axis, and also that uh, meets the criteria of the probability that we can that we can adjust. Now let's add a uh, set material node and assign uh, metallic numbers to the soldered pins. Now let's see what it looks like. Yes, that's that's what I wanted. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, let's organize it a little bit. So let's uh, stick these group of nodes together, frame it, so frame selected, and let's name this selection, point selection. Placement selection. Placement selection. Now, um, this group, let's frame it. Frame it and name it. And these will be soldered pins. Okay. So let's move these to the side and Let's make another group. Let's frame it, but actually without the instances. Let's frame it and, uh, and name it. This will be points. Okay. And now we have our baseboard finished. Back to our layout tab. Now let's see the it from the front. 
and let's make the sockets a little bit taller. So let's go to edit mode, select the bottom face and let's move it downwards on the Z axis. Now back to object mode and let's actually position it, uh, position it low, entire a little bit, a uh, little bit lower like that and now let's also move down the baseboard but first of all let's actually set the origin to geometry okay now it's perfectly centered and let's move it down okay that looks that looks decent uh, let's add some uh, lights uh, between the socket and the and the tube. I saw some uh, image of the Nixie clock on uh, on Google that had it, and I liked it. So let's uh, let's add it also to to our clock. So let's go to the light properties. Uh, change the power to 0 0.1 watts. Uh, radius to 2.5 millimeters. To to correspond with a LED diode. And let's change the color to blue. Okay, now position it between the socket and the glass tube. And let's manually duplicate as duplicate linked uh, because I want to change the parameters of uh, all the lights at once. So let's position man manually to minus 0 0.1 meter. Now duplicate linked again. Move it minus, uh, this will be minus 0 0.125. And again to the to the to the rest of the of the tubes in the same way. Okay. The final two minus uh, minus zero point one two five duplicate linked and minus zero point one. Okay. Now let's move it actually out of the. Let's uh, let's test the test the lights. So if we change the one parameter, it will uh, it will project to to the rest. Okay, so let's move it out of the C, out of the collection to the scene route. And uh, now let's see how it looks like in Eevee. Okay, that's, that's cool. And if we switch the renderer cycles, let's see it. The lights are there. Uh, it just calculates also the shadows, so the effect is not uh, not so intense. Let's uh, rename this uh, a baseboard. Baseboard. And this one will be socket. And uh, let's move it out of the collection into the scene route. Now let's hide all the digits and uh, we will actually leave, uh, leave visible only the baseboard and, uh, and the socket. Let's, uh, let's hide everything else. Okay, so we will make an, a case for the, for the baseboard and the sockets. So let's add a... First, actually, let's add a cylinder. This will be a cutout for the for the socket. Set the vertices to twelve and the radius to five centimeters, and depth will be uh, one centimeter, zero point zero one meters. Okay, and also let's rotate it with fifteen degrees, because uh, I want when I make the the array, I want the edges to be parallel there. So this cylinder will be a cutout for the socket and now let's apply all transforms and also set the origin to geometry. Now let's add a cube. Okay, and uh, scale it down. I will experiment with the dimensions a bit. Uh, the thickness, uh, the thickness I will set to five millimeters. 
and with the width and height I will uh, I will check what uh, what will fit the best so let's position it see from the front move it downwards to compare with the with the baseboard center it and let's change it to 0 0.70 to 71 okay now from the top and let's uh, let's change the the width so let's experiment with it what looks what looks good and i think in the end 0 0.24 will be okay 24 yes now let's uh, move it so it intersects with the cylinder so it the cylinder protrudes both from the top and from the bottom because we will be doing doing a boolean operation on it and uh, also, let's add the uh, edge loops in the center of the long uh, edge because we will be modeling only a quarter of the of the cover, and then we will use a mirror modifier. Now, let's delete the unnecessary edges, but do not select it like this. Uh, I made a mistake. Instead, select just the edge, the, the, just the face that you want to leave. Select invert, and then delete the faces. Okay. Now uh, let's uh, let's add a array modifier to the to the cylinder with a constant offset. But actually, we have to quit from the edit mode back to object mode and uh, assign it to the to the to the cylinder. So this will be usual, our usual constant offset with uh, minus zero point one and uh, another array with a constant offset. Three, uh, three items and uh, on the X minus, minus 0 0.225 uh, meters. Okay. Now, I also want there to be a radius uh, on the in the corner, but obviously I can bevel a, bevel a vertex as hard as I try. So let's fix it. Let's extrude the, the outer edges a bit extrude them downwards, select the select the the edge on the corner, now bevel it and uh, there is a problem because we didn't apply a scale so let's uh, go to object mode, object apply, apply scale and now we can uh, we can uh, bevel it again and it will uh, bevel correctly. Okay, let's set the width of the bevel to 2.5 centimeters and uh, let's use two segments because I want their radius. Okay, now we can uh, actually delete the extruded edges, faces, sorry, the faces. and uh, back in the object mode and we can apply the boolean modifier and let's pick the let's pick the cylinder and now we have a cutout for the for the socket so now let's uh, hide everything except for the for the cube that we will be using for modeling and uh, actually for uh, for the model to be to be decent we need to add some uh, add some uh, edges and we will do it with a knife tool so we will add uh, uh, horizontal cuts that go all the way through the length of the model so let's add the cuts like this just click on uh, on the vertex and then uh, near the vertex when it will highlight click again and to finish the cut uh, press enter so let's go from the top view and uh, actually 
arrange the the vertex so that it uh, it is the so that the line or the cut is horizontal the same on the other side and let's uh, let's continue with another horizontal cut so click near the vertex drag it click again and enter and the same process you can see that it highlights uh, when it snaps to a vertex with the with the red uh, red edge and the yellow yellow fill and uh, let's also do it here and up to the other side Okay. Now we can actually add the the cut around the cutout. So let's click in them somewhere in the middle of the edge and let's go along the along the along the cutout or along the the circle, the half circle. Okay, and obviously here we don't have anywhere to continue, so let's hit enter and uh and interrupt the cut and let's make the vertical cuts now so they will go like this the same for the other cutout and for the final one Now we can continue with the with the knife tool around the the first one, and uh, in a moment we will fix the triangles that we have that we have created. So you can also go across multiple uh, edges and just click uh, click at the at the last one, and it will automatically create the the vertices on the edges that we have crossed along the along the way so now now let's uh, make an equidistant along the second cut or second cutout and the third one Okay, hit enter. And now let's fix the let's fix the triangles. And so let's make a cut here. And then also at this one. Uh, actually, actually I think they are not necessary. Now let's uh, let's actually merge the vertices. Yes, the, the cuts were unnecessary. So let's select mesh, merge at last. And uh, also these to, to get rid of the of the edge. So really it wasn't necessary to, to create these cuts. Okay, also let's fix this. So mesh, merge at center, at last. Sorry, at last. Mesh, merge at last. Okay, and now we can just merge the vertices the same way without the without the unnecessary cut. Mesh merge at last. And the same here. And uh, we will just uh, we will just move the last vertex downwards. 
Okay. Now what we have to do is uh, we have to create uh, we have to create an edge along the along the the outer outer edge <laughs> outer edge of the of the of the case. So let's again use the knife tool and let's cut. Okay, you can do it either like this with a single clicks. Here, of course, we have to because we don't have anywhere to anywhere to put the put the cuts like an edge. So we have to click on uh, in somewhere on the on the face. And in case you have a, you have a cut like this, you can drag it all the way to the end, and you see that it will create the vertices automatically on the on the edges that it intersects. So just align it, click, and enter. And now just to fix these. One, two, three. And uh, finally, we will make one uh, one horizontal and one vertical cut from vertical cut from here that will go all the way to the top. And from here, that will go all the way to the left side. And now we've got rid of uh, of an of all end guns, and we have only only quads. So now also to actually support the radius on the or the fillet on the on the corner, let's place some uh, loop cuts. One we will use with the with the loop cut tool, and the other one uh, will be a little deformed if we use the loop cut. So let's use the knife again, and just put a vertical cut from the bottom, from the top to the bottom. Okay. And enter. And uh, now the basic shape is pretty much, pretty much done. Let's go to object mode. Uh, I will apply a solidify modifier just to just to see the see the shape and the and the subdivision surface. And I think it looks it looks okay. Now let's remove the solidify modifier. Oh. And uh, add actually a mirror modifier. But we have to move the mirror above the subdivision surface so it welds correctly. And we will mirror it also on the y-axis. Now back to object mode. And let's uh, let's extrude the outer edges. So uh, extrude region and actually switch to X Y Z. Move it downwards on the Z. Set it to two point five millimeters. And I forgot to extrude the extrude the inside of the cutouts. So let's fix it. Let's select the the edges and extrude them. Again, 2.5 millimeters. Good. Now back to object mode and uh, we can actually now mirror the entire object also on the z-axis. Okay, let's add the edge loops. Or loop cuts to make sharper corners. The same with the cutouts. Make it a bit sharper, the edges. OK. 
Okay, now back in the object mode and let's set shades move. Okay, and the top part is done. So let's actually rename it as uh, acrylic cover top. Now let's uh, let's duplicate the object, move it downwards, and we will name it acrylic cover bottom. Okay, now we can hide the top part and uh, let's work on the on the bottom part. Let's go to edit mode and uh, now we have to get rid of the of the extruded faces. So you have already the loop cuts and I suggest to stop following me for a moment because I screwed up. I I selected the the edges on the on the the extruded edges in in an x-ray mode but i forgot that there are uh, there are edge loops uh, edge loops on yeah, on the cutouts so it was terrible to get rid of them now well, the way to do it is actually to turn off the x-ray select it from the top and then uh, select the uh, invert to invert the selection this will uh, select all the all the edges that are not planar and or the faces that are not planar and now delete them. Now let's bridge the bridge the cutout. So uh, also I added some unnecessary edge. So let's get rid of it. Now select the select the edges and use the loop tools and bridge it. The same for the other one. And the last one as well. Okay, and now let's get rid of the unnecessary, unnecessary edges. Now hit delete and dissolve edge and once again. Now delete and dissolve edge. Okay, and this is our base for the, for the bottom. Now, uh, Let's select the the top all the top faces. Uh, select extrude. Extrude it upwards, and we have to get rid uh, set the the width to five millimeters. We have to get just get rid of the of the faces that are let's say inside of the object. So. Let's actually hide the the mirror modifier so we can uh, so we can see them. So let's deactivate the mirror modifier. Select the faces that are on the inside and delete them. Delete faces. Okay. Now select the the outer edge. And again, let's extrude it. Okay. Also get rid of the, of this and this face. Delete faces. Okay. Now let's uh, edge loop, add loop cuts to, uh, to tighten the edges again. To the to the inside and now also uh, also on the in here but uh, with a knife tool so let's go from the top view and let's uh, let's cut it along the along the lip Now I'm going to click in onto a face and then back on the edges and uh, up to the end. Enter. And one more cut here. Go 
great. Now let's uh, let's activate the mirror modifier again, also the subdivision surface. And uh, I think we need just some loop cuts on the top. Perfect. So the bo bottom part is done as well. Back to the object mode and let's uh, Let's uh, see the rest of the object, so let's unhide the top cover. Yes, that seems to fit perfectly together. And let's actually also unhide the, the rest of the objects. Now go from the front and let's position the cover, the top part of the cover. And uh, now also let's uh, let's make the bottom part a little bit taller. Okay. Let's move it so it touches the touches the top part. Okay. And the modeling of the of the acrylic cover is done so now let's actually move to shading tab and let's uh, let's assign it a new material so let's uh, let's select the top part add a new material let's call it acrylic Turn down the roughness all the way to zero, transmission all the way to one, and roughness to zero, transmission roughness to 0 0.1. Now also the index of refraction is 1.47 for acrylic. Let's assign it also to the bottom part. And uh, don't forget that we need to enable the refraction on per material basis. So in the material properties, settings, Let's set the blend mode to alpha blend and enable screen space refraction. That's all only for EV, of course. And when we switch to cycles renderer, it works right out of the box. So now let's, uh, let's collapse the digits and let's actually also unhide them. Now it seems a bit dark, so let's actually let's actually do something about it. Uh, no, I didn't want the X-ray. Let's turn it off. I didn't want that. So. Let's go to layout and let's uh, position the light a bit. So move it, uh, move it to the center and uh, change it to sun. Set the strength to ten watts. And now let's also let's also change the the target. Let's say of the of the light or the angle so that it points towards our our clock. Something like this. Um, okay, let's see back in the shading tab. Now, now let's also add some environment to the scene and uh, we will add a sky texture. Nishita looks best, but it doesn't work with uh, Eevee. So let's change it to Preetham and that looks much brighter. We may tune it up uh, later, later on also. But for the moment, that looks that looks quite good. And also, I forgot to switch to GPU rendering, and I was wondering why it was so slow. Let's actually build the shader. Let's organize the workspace a bit, uh, hide the folders, and maximize the the nodes area. Let's horizontal split it, and uh, set the view to timeline because we will need it uh, as the shader is dynamic.
Now let's select one of the numbers and uh, let's cut this connection. Also this one, move this to the side and let's enter hashtag, uh, hashtag frame. This will be source of our clock, which is the current frame of the scene. Let's duplicate it, control D, rename it to FPS as frames per second. And this will be our constant uh, that we'll use uh, as a actual scene uh, frames per second. Let's duplicate it and rename it to start hour. This will be an uh, hour that the clock starts. Duplicate it again and uh, let's name it start minute. This will be a minute, obviously. And once again, duplicate and... Uh, and rename and this will be our start second. So we need to convert the time uh, to frames and uh, for that we will use a math node. So we need to multiply uh, each uh, each of the of the start time with a frames per second. So let's start with seconds. We will multiply it with uh, our frame rate, then duplicate it and uh, plug in the start minute. Now for the minute, we obviously need to multiply it again by 60, as there are uh, 60 seconds in a minute. And duplicate uh, these two nodes again and plug in the start hour. And uh, the start hour will be multiplied by 3600 as there are 3600 seconds in, a, in an hour. Now, well, what we need to do is to simply add all of these uh, values together. So the start second and start minute, now the start minute and start hour. And uh, on top of all of that, we need to add the, the current frame. So once again, copy the add and let's plug in the current frame and the result of the, of the start time. Okay, let's uh, frame it. Hey, let's, uh, no, it's, uh, it's on the top. Yes, that one I wanted to, to pull out and frame selected and let's name it uh, start time, current time. Okay. Now, uh, what I will do, I will add a math node and uh, it will be set to function wrap. So let's copy this add and uh, let's set it to wrap. Uh, this will wrap, uh, this will work uh, with a value and it will uh, start from a minimum to ma maximum and when it reaches the maximum it will uh, it will wrap it to, to zero again. So let's plug actually the current time and this will this will work for seconds. So uh, the maximum will be actually uh, it will be frames per second multiplied by 60. This is a uh, this is for the for the first position of the of the clock for the for the seconds. So every uh, every 60 seconds this will wrap to to zero. Now let's copy another math node, set it to divide. And we need to divide it uh, by the frames per second, and uh, this will be this will be basically our uh, our uh, one second addition. Now, uh, an another math note: set it to uh, to truncate. This will uh, this will make sure that when we divide it, it stays on the same number until uh, until the the division is whole. Now another wrap node, and uh, this one will actually wrap our indexes from uh, zero to ten. Okay, and uh, now we can plug it into the compare node and compare it with an object index, and now we have uh, our uh, first uh, first digit. Why is it five though? It should be at zero. Let's uh, let's check uh, because we I I forgot to to zero out the start time. So let's zero it out. Okay, now we have our first digit. So let's uh, let's copy the three nodes: divide, truncate, and wrap. Well, let's uh, frame it first. 
and let's name it uh, seconds decimal seconds des okay let's copy it control c control v move it downwards and uh, now let's rename it seconds hex hexa as this this is the the position which changes from 0 to 5 okay the division this time will be this is basically uh, every 10 uh, every 10 seconds so it's divided by 10 multiplied by frames per second and uh, the indexes will start from 10 and at at 16 now uh, what we can uh, do uh, to combine them actually is that we will uh, simply add the two comparisons together for which uh, we will use a math node let's uh, let's uh, uh, turn down the epsilons to 0 0.1 and uh, let's copy a math node and set it to add and let's simply add the two comparisons together and uh, plug them into the factor now uh, what will happen uh, is that we will be we will be at two instead of zero and we have to actually subtract uh, two from the truncated value uh, it's something to do with the truncation and with the rounding we just have to subtract two i experimented with it uh, before and this is the this this will behave correctly so when we set the time to 30 59 this this is behaving correctly okay now let's uh, copy this nodes group uh, let's copy also a uh, wrapper and the multiplier this time this will uh, go for the for the second uh, two position second two tubes and uh, now uh, this uh, this will wrap uh, every hour or every 3600 seconds so let's uh, multiply frames per second by 3600 and uh, let's uh, let's add another multiply node for our uh, division and now we have to actually divide it uh, frames per second uh, multiplied by 60 as the first position will change every minute let's move the the object info a little bit downwards and uh, let's rename this to uh, minutes decimal instead of seconds minutes decimal okay and now let's copy the two compare nodes copy also the add node to create this sort of a tree okay let's plug the value and the result the same for the for the other comparison now let's already copy the decimal minutes and our multiplier let's put the multiplier in the in the frame and uh, now let's copy it and put it in the minutes uh, the other one the other frame let's plug the result uh, into no not not there i didn't want that okay so uh, uh, this will uh, this will need to be divided by uh, 10 minutes so or 600 seconds so let's again multiply the frames per second by by 600 okay and let's uh, plug in the rep value into the compare and let's add these two together with another math node or add node but let's make some room for it okay plug the results into the addition and now now obviously nothing happened because we didn't set the indexes correctly so this one will start at 20 and and at 30 and the other one will start at 30 and end at 36 okay now we have our minutes lit as well so let's uh, check the start minute let's set some time no uh, nothing happened in the minutes 
why uh, why is that uh, why is that and let's inspect it because we actually didn't uh, didn't plug in the the current time so now now we're working correctly 58 yes let's zero it out also the seconds and let's uh, let's duplicate the minutes setup including the wrapper control c control v and we also duplicate the frame what's unnecessary let's move this uh, current time uh, somewhere to the center of the entire setup so it's a bit of a symmetrical now let's plug the result into the final wrapper and uh, this wrapper uh, will uh, will go the same like the last one but uh, we will actually have to multiply it again and uh, this multiplier will be either uh, 12 or 24 and this will decide uh, how our clock will work whether a 12 hour clock or 24 hour clock okay let's uh, change the indexes this will start at 40 and at 50 this one will start at 50 and uh, actually end at uh, 53 so this will basically wrap when the first uh, digit positions reaches two then it has to then it has to wrap to to zero okay uh yes we let's plug in the frames per second the value will be 3600 or uh, every hour this has to wrap and uh, this one will be 36000 so every 10 hours okay and let's again uh, copy the compare and add notes control uh, control c control v okay and let's plug the results in and the object index and now let's add another add note and let's sum up all of the all of the comparisons together and plug them into our factor okay we have uh, one here as well we have to subtract uh, some constant from it and this time one so let's copy the divide and change it to subtract and let's set a value to one now we should have a correct time and let's uh, let's see 23 we have 13 that's that's obviously not uh, not correct and that's that's because our uh, fps is actually not plugged into the multiplier so let's correct that and now let's test our clock so let's start it to something before midnight and uh, let's uh, let's actually set the frames per second to something faster like five frames per second and let's play the animation okay now our clock is actually clocking So we can change it to even something faster. And here we turned uh, over midnight. Okay. So let's set the end time to something high like 90,000 because it was uh, wrapping all around already. And uh, let's, let's play it again before the midnight. Okay. So here we have our working clock. Originally, I thought to end the video there, but I decided to make some uh, some additions to the model. I added a a foot, which is uh, which is a basically a cylinder that I that I modified using the same processes as uh, for the sockets or any other cylindrical models that we made during the tutorial. Uh, it's just uh, extrudes, loop cuts, insets, the the usual 
just don't go with the loop cuts uh, all the way to the to the corners so that it still retains a uh, larger fillet since it's a rubber then i made a material rubber material for it applied it uh, played around with the roughness the specular reflections to, to for the material to feel like a rubber and then i placed it and uh, using an array modifiers i distributed it to the four corners of the of the acrylic case okay then i decided to make a posts that will support the baseboard because it was kind of a floating in the in the acrylic case so i i added a cylinder make it uh, six sides and uh, then added some uh, loop cuts to to make the the edges uh, sharp so that it still looks like a hexagonal shape and not like a cylinder applied the metallic numbers material to it and then again played around with an array to to distribute it in uh, into axes on the x and uh, then uh, then i made some mistakes on the y axis and uh, played around with it until i got uh, the result that i that i wanted Then I actually downloaded uh, an HDRI image from Polyhaven, which I applied as an environment map and disabled the, disabled the light. Then added a backdrop, uh, which is basically just a plane that I positioned, uh, used some, uh, some loop cuts to, to modify it and added a subdivision surface modifier for the, for the tra transition to be smooth. Then I played with a backdrop material and uh, tuned up the, the strength of the emission and then I actually thought that it might be cool that the clock starts uh, speeding up at, uh, at some time. So I played around with it and added some uh, keyframes to the FPS. Also, I cranked up the strength of the of the six uh, blue lights in the in the sockets. Uh, then, uh, then as well, I cranked the emissions. And uh, actually, I looked at the glass and acrylic shaders because I felt that the render times were too long. And when I uh, when I decreased the roughness to zero and uh, replaced it with uh, transmission roughness, the render times were much better. And to give the give the glowing numbers a bit of a punch, I added a glare node in the compositor and set it to fog glow. So this made this uh, bloom-like effect uh, similar to what Eevee has uh, has built in. And this is what my final animation looks like. And that's a wrap for today. Thank you for watching and see you at our next project.